Welcome to MFTS 100, Print Reading for Manufacturing. In this course, we're gonna cover engineering drawings, how to interpret them. So what is a drawing or an engineering drawing? In a literal sense, an engineering drawing is just a very specific kind of picture, right? So if you just draw a picture of a house or a boat, people will know exactly what that object is but they won't know how big it is, right? There's no sizes or dimensions. An engineering drawing just provides all the sizes and dimensions for everything on the part or assembly that somebody would need to know to produce that part. So the difference between just a sketch or drawing or art is that that requires interpretation to figure out exactly what, you know, how you would make that. Whereas engineering drawings should have no interpretation involved. Everything should be right there so that somebody can make that part, have all the information they need about it without having to contact the author of that drawing. Now, drawings are a universal language. They're used by engineers, machinists, welders, drafters, and inspectors. Everybody in that chain of events is in, the, in a company or um, several companies is gonna use the same drawing for the same part. They don't have typically different drawings for different people. So there's not usually a special drawing for welding or a special drawing for machinists. Everybody should be able to understand the same engineering drawing. And that's what you're gonna learn in this course. Drawings are used to fabricate, weld, or machine items. They're also used for ordering replacement parts or to assemble components. It's important that drawings incorporate sound design, which is where engineering comes from, and that the, the manufacturing is possible and efficient. It's easy to make things perfect or nearly perfect on a piece of paper, but it can be very, very difficult to machine or weld that item up. It can get very, very expensive. So it's the job of engineering and drafting with the help of the manufacturing to figure out the optimum way to put an idea on paper. Next, drawings are legal documents. When a drawing is approved and signed by the design activity, typically by engineers and drawing checkers, and you go into an agreement with somebody to make parts according to that drawing, the drawing is part of the legal contract and can be brought up in court. If you agree to make something to a drawing and then the customer inspects it and it doesn't meet the drawing requirements, you're liable for not meeting the drawing requirements. So if you say you're gonna make something to the drawing, it's really important you understand exactly what the drawing says, right? And there is interpretation in this, you know, drawings can get pretty complicated and I got some examples for you at the end of this video. Drawings show the final requirements of a part or assembly. Now companies might come up with process plans that include, you know, parts of drawings or sketches, but the official drawing itself only shows the end result of the, all the processes. Drawings typically don't tell you how to make a part or assembly. They just show you the finished product and all the dimensions and tolerances. And it's up to manufacturing to figure out the best and most efficient way to make that part or assembly. Now, standardization is very, very important for making drawings. There's basically two uh, large organizations that handle this. The American Society of Mechanical Engineers is the one we're gonna use in this course, but there's also ISO, which is the European version of drawing standards. And later in the course, I'll explain some differences, but it's enough for now to know that ASME is what we're gonna follow. It's the basically American drawing standards. Before, around World War II, it was common for very large companies like Ford Motor Company and General Motors to have their own drafting standards. Uh, they would have handbooks and I actually have some if you're in my course and you wanna see, please stop by my office. Uh, I've got the printed versions. These big companies were typically very vertically integrated, which means they would make their own steel and rubber and everything they would need to make say a, an automobile. So they didn't really have to go to outside contractors a lot. So the only people that needed to understand their drawings were people in the company. 
Now, when World War II came around, all these giant companies had to work together. So you had Chrysler making parts for uh, you know, tanks and General Motors making airplanes. They had to work with other people's drawings. So the US military actually took the initiative to come up with a common drafting standard those eventually became the ASME standards. So there's a couple mill standards, and then those eventually got taken up by uh, uh, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers to the standards we have now that basically everybody agrees upon. Traditional drawings were made by hand on drafting boards with pencils and various drafting tools. This was very labor intensive for obvious reasons. You had to physically draw things. That is very rare nowadays. I mean, it's still used for sketching to come up with ideas, but for the most part, computer-aided drafting, or CAD, is used for almost all drawings today. There's a couple CAD programs that are very popular and used throughout industry. The one we're gonna use in this program is called SolidWorks, but there's also AutoCAD, Creo, or that used to be ProEngineer. There's Inventor, a couple different varieties. Now, they're all similar. If you learn one, you'll be able to learn another one fairly quickly, but the files that they use typically do not play well together. So if you have a drawing made in AutoCAD, it's gonna be very difficult to look at that drawing or, and or make changes in SolidWorks. So when drawings are shared between companies, say to get a quote, they're typically shared as PDFs. PDF stands for Portable Document Format. It's a very, very common way to share files. PDFs are made with what are known as vectors, which just means they're mathematically defined shapes. So if you zoom in to a PDF, it's always going to look perfect. You're gonna have straight lines and circles, whereas if you zoom in to a JPEG or a, just a regular picture, you're gonna to start to see little tiny dots or pixels that's known as a raster image. So when you take a picture with your digital camera or phone, that's a raster image. When you open up a PDF, it's a vector file, which just allows easier reproducibility. You can have a lot of information on a PDF that can be easily scaled up. So what's the point of taking this class? I'm gonna put an image up on the board right here. Without knowing anything, maybe some of you know a little bit about print reading, maybe some of you know nothing, you can pretty much tell me what the shape of this part is, right? It's a rectangle with a hole in it. You can see on the right view over here that it's got a certain thickness. You can sort of follow the, the dimensions and see about how big it is. This part is two and a half inches long, about an inch and a half wide, and then uh, half an inch thick and then the hole is one inch in diameter. Now, let me put another image on the board. It's the same part, but now we've got a lot of extra symbology going on. This is known as geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, which we'll cover after midterm. What you might think before you know anything about geometric dimensioning tolerancing or GD&T is that the part with all the extra symbols is gonna be more complicated and expensive. But in reality, this part is actually going to be cheaper to produce and more uh, uh, easier to inspect. We'll talk a lot about that later and I'll explain as best I can why that is so. But by the end of this class, you'll understand everything on this drawing and be able to explain it to other people. Now, the last little bit, New technology allows us to have 3D models, and I'll put an example up here, with dimensions stuck to them. Now, this might seem a lot easier than trying to read uh, what's known as an orthographic projection, which is a 3D uh, model laid flat on paper. The problem is that these 3D models suffer from the same problems as you know the sharing files between CAD platforms. You might send somebody one of these 3D models and they might not be able to open it, whereas anybody can understand a two-dimensional drawing. Another downside to these 3D models is that you still have to apply the dimensions and tolerances and there still have to sort of be views. There's a, a way to look at it. The dimensions don't always move the way you think they are. Now, the CAD companies are 
been for years saying these are going to take over in the next couple of years. They have yet to do so. In my personal experience, almost every company I've worked with, they use uh, two-dimensional drawings. Very few companies have moved to these 3D uh, model type drawings. And if you can understand a two-dimensional drawing, you'll easily be able to understand one of these three-dimensional drawings. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoy the class. There's more videos coming very, very soon.